Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to the Texas Values Report. My name is Nicole Hudgens and I'm the Senior Policy Analyst for Texas Values. We are the largest statewide organization focusing on faith, family, and freedom in the state of Texas. And the way that we do that is we're involved with what happens at the Texas Capitol, what's going on in the courts, and also what's happening in the courts of public opinion, the media. So we get to be involved with a lot of different issues. Uh, We just finished the the legislative session. So we're taking a deep breath, but we're involved with what's happening a lot at, uh, at the local level. We've been talking a lot with our national partners and there's so much happening in the state of Texas, even when we're not in the legislative session on issues of faith, family, and freedom. So we talk about the issues of life, marriage, religious freedom, human sexuality, and more. There's going to be some exciting updates uh, probably within the next month because we're going to see where some of the important legislation that was passed during the legislature where it's actually where it's going to be enacted. Uh, You're going to see some exciting things coming out from the Texas Values team on that. So stay tuned. Uh, We also have a C4, our Texas Values Action Arm, which allows us to do endorsements. We're going to be releasing our scorecards soon. And believe it or not, the elections are coming. I can't believe we're already talking about that. But for right now, I want to focus on something really exciting we have coming up on September 6th through 7th, which is our Faith, Family, and Freedom policy forum. So we have folks coming from all over the nation to come speak at this policy forum. Last year, we sold out. It was an amazing event that we had right here in Austin. We're going to have the event here in Austin again at Great Hills Baptist Church, September 6th through 7th. You have to register, but thankfully we keep the cost pretty low so we can have as many people attend as possible. And you can get that information by going to txvalues.org. You can register there. We've got some exciting guests like Eric Treen, who's with the Department, United States Department of Justice. We have Rep, uh, Chairman Leach, Representative Leach, who is the author of the Texas Born Alive Act. We've got Representative Matt Krause and Senator Brian Hughes, who were the authors of the Save Chick-fil-A bill. We have Representative Candy Noble, who wrote, uh, and Senator Can- Noble and Campbell who are involved uh, with the passage of SB 22, which ensures that local taxpayer dollars don't go towards abortion providers or affiliates. We've got folks coming from national organizations like Alliance Defending Freedom, and we have a very special guest with me today, Chelsea Yeoman, who is the Texas State Director for Human Coalition. And her, may, her name may sound familiar to you, because she was formerly the senior counsel and chief of staff for First Liberty Institute. But she's now joined the team with Human Coalition, working on some very important pro-life issues. And we're so excited to have her, not just on the show today, but if you love what you hear in this conversation, I encourage you, go sign up for the policy forum at txvalues.org so that you can come see Chelsea in person. And Chelsea, of course, I have to sh- I have to give her a shout out. She's a very dear friend as well. So Chelsea, thank you so much for coming on the show and joining me today. Oh, oh, absolutely, Nicole. What an introduction. I'm very honored that you would have me this morning to talk about just so many exciting um, issues that are near and dear to really all of our hearts. Absolutely. Well, for our listeners who may be newer to our show or newer to the policy movements, um, tell us what Human Coalition is. What, what do you all do in, in this organization? Sure. So um, I'm with Human Coalition Action, which is a frankly, a brand new initiative um, with its sister organization, Human Coalition. So Human Coalition is a clinic model that reaches women who are pregnant in their most desperate hour um, and really seeks out abortion-minded women and helps change their mind. And they are a national organization, the largest pro-life organization in the entire country, um, and they've saved over 13,000 preborn children from abortion. So they're doing incredible work, um, and their ultimate goal is to to really compete with Planned Parenthood for women and helping them during their most dire hour. But they realized that they were kind of limited just on the clinic side from what they were able to do. And so they ultimately decided to open up just just like a mirror to Planned Parenthood, a lobbying effort in order to really change legislation, work through the grassroots and mobilize the grassroots and really just empower pro-life entities to continue doing the good work. 
to save preborn children in their states. And so it is really the first and only organization in the entire country that is a functional competitor to Planned Parenthood. And I'm just very honored and excited to be joining their mission and working on that effort in the state to advocate for for really our unborn children and for the women, of course, um, who need help and need to be served. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's amazing. And wow, 13,000 lives saved. And I think it's so important that folks realize that when we're saving children, when we're saving moms from these situations, when they're in crisis and they need somebody to come alongside them and help, you know, we're not yes. just impacting one person, we're impacting the woman, we're impacting the child. But then think of all the children that that child will have. Think of all the family members who are impacted by that by that mother and that, that child. Like, you're literally changing the world by, by reaching it's, out to these women. I always say it. I say being pro-life is pro-woman. And one of the most incredible things about being on board with Human Coalition Action is that the the virtual clinic is downstairs. And so there are people, there are social workers on the line, counselors on the line, 24-7 with women who genuinely put into their Google, how can I have an abortion today? And they're intercepting those women, talking to them, meeting them where they're at. And their ultimate goal is a long-term stabilizing effort for their circumstances because that's what's needed to help protect, enable women to make the right choice to protect their, their preborn children. But the best part about all of that is we are able to really understand what's going on in these women's lives by just walking downstairs and and asking and saying, okay, what would really move the meter for you? What would help you? Things like safe houses, getting them out of domestic abuse situations, helping them get a job, job, career counseling. I mean, all of those you wouldn't necessarily think are quote-unquote pro-life issues. But when you take them as a policy as a whole, they really would make an impact for helping um, save children in our communities. And so when I'm looking at, at our advocacy effort in Austin, when I'm looking at the Texas state legislature, I'm not just thinking through abortion bans. I'm thinking broader than that and what's really going to be what these women have said will move the meter for them. And that's, that's really why I'm so excited to start this advocacy initiative. Wow. That is so exciting. And you know, Chelsea, that reminds me, I'll never forget the first time I was, I was actually at this really amazing kind of national prayer meeting is the best way to explain it. Um, thousands of people in a stadium just praying for a number of issues for our nation, but specifically on the issue of abortion. And I'll never forget when some speakers said or posed the question, what's going to happen after Roe v. Wade is overturned? Because we're still, we're going to have women who are still in need. We're going to have children who still need saving. And I feel like the work that Human Coalition is doing is, is creating a way that when women, no matter what, are in a crisis situation, like, you're ready to help them. And, and, and instead of pointing out the problem, you're actually bringing solutions to the table. And, you know, unfortunately, it's, it's actually heartbreaking to see where there have been these lies that have been posed to women of saying, you know, if you have a child, you can't go to college. If you have a child, you can't have a job. If you have a child, you know, all these bad things are going to happen. But they refuse to tell them the joy that a child brings and the harms that come with abortion. But what y'all are doing is actually bringing solutions to the table of saying, this woman, this woman needs, needs somebody to, to talk to. First off, someone to talk to and, and to walk through that emotionally, but also get connected with the right resources so that not only are they able to have their child, but they're, the woman is able to thrive. And so I just so applaud the work that y'all are doing. Um, tell me a little bit, just with your background, I've, we've gotten to work together a bit when you were with First Liberty. Tell me, you know, is there a correlation between the pro-life and the religious freedom issues? You know, I I definitely think there is. I obviously am leaving one beloved mission um, to go to another one. So I really do feel so lucky that, that that's the case. But um, when you think about it, um, my real ultimate goal is to see churches lead out in this effort. I think if, the, if churches and their members really leaned in to care for these women in our communities, almost half of the women who actually actively have an abortion are attending church. 
that is a staggering statistic to me and one that just lets me know like as churches we need to look around who is in our midst who is hurting who needs help and mobilize churches and enable them to really do the good work because it's, it's not just going to be the government can't be the only answer, right? And so that's part of my goal and part of my mission here at the Coalition Action is to be to really mobilize the grassroots in a broad way. Um, and of course, religious liberty plays directly into that, um, the ability for pregnancy resource centers to do what they do without fear of lawsuit or government retribution. Um, and even things to me like being on an equal playing field um, with abortion providers is so important. And what we see, you know, you think of bills that were passed last legislative session, um, and a lot has been made of the last legislative session on the pro-life side, but there were some really great victories on all fronts passed on the pro-life issue because local municipalities are no longer able to get to partner with abortion providers and give them leases for a dollar a year on prime real estate property, right? And things like that, the inability for Planned Parenthood to contract with local entities or receive state funding, all of those funds and those types of contracts could be redirected to people who are doing the life-saving work that clinics are doing. Um, and I think there are some wins out there. But making sure on the religious liberty end that pro-life groups are equally eligible as abortion providers and aren't told, well, if you don't provide contraception or if you're unwilling to do abortions, you can't receive this funding or you can't be a part of this pro- grant program. Mm-hmm. Those are all, like, to me, equal access issues that um, the First Amendment really would call discrimination. That's religious discrimination. So making sure it's an even playing field for everyone is, to me, a huge way to really infuse um the people who are already doing good work on the ground with the ability to do to do even more. Right. Wow. And and those are so some really important issues that you brought up. You know, talking about being able to to have the opportunity to to access those grants. You talked about, you know, certainly we've seen where the city of Austin decided to let Planned Parenthood lease taxpayer owned property. <laughs> So mm-hmm. the, the city owned the property, and ultimately it's the taxpayers. So Planned Parenthood gets to rent that property for a dollar a year for 20 years. And mm-hmm. folks in that area are paying hundreds of dollars, just, just an increase of what they already what they were paying this past year. They've seen an increase in hundreds of dollars in property taxes. Is it fair that the organization that has been known for selling baby body parts, covering up child sex abuse, uh, doing so much, so, so many nefarious things, why are they getting free rent? I mean, it's, it's pretty much free rent. It's not fair to the taxpayers. And, and like you said, there's some amazing, you know, pregnancy resource centers that are truly helping women. You know, you hear from these former Planned Parenthood workers who talk about that it's like, it's, it's almost like, you know, bringing, they're constantly focused on the number of how many women they can get in and get an abortion. It's literally like, almost like a cattle drive where they're bringing the women in, they're having an abortion, and they only have 10 minutes or so to do it. I mean, just quickly, quickly, quickly getting these women through because it's a dollar amount to them. It's not the human being. Whereas these right. pregnancy... There's no follow-up. There's no stabilizing of the woman and her circumstances. There's no counseling. And we know, you know, even statistically depression rates, suicide rates, I mean, the psychological impact from the choice to have an abortion um, is so detrimental to women, and they're an active, you know, to me, culprit in that and facilitator of that, and not to mention, I think, um, imprisonment rates, but, like, there's a staggering statistic about how many women in our prisons have had abortion and that their self-destructive behavior after the abortion has landed them in prison. I mean, there's so many impacts that come from this industry and you know our goal is to really be the the antidote to that and to say we are meeting women where they're at we're going to care for them um long past even there's even counseling programs that are at many of the clinics for after a woman has made the choice to have an abortion to help her land off her feet so that she doesn't do that again you know there's there's a lot of great work to be done for women um, and i think I think that our our state and our society as a whole really should be engaged in meeting these needs and not just providing quick medical fixes, mm-hmm. quote unquote. Right, right. Well, tell me, 
I just wanted to dive in on just two more things that you mentioned that I just think is so important for our listeners to hear. Tell me, you know, you hear the argument a lot of, you know, well, if you're pro-life, you don't understand, like, you're not pro-woman. You're, you're more concerned about the baby than you are about the woman. How do you feel that Christians and those in the pro-life movement can combat that narrative? That is a great question, Nicole. You're really throwing it at me today. Um, <laughs> I think I think it's a holistic picture, right? You can't you can't neglect either one because both are human beings in the image of God with dignity, and so both both deserve love, deserve life, and and need that. And so I think it's changing the framing from um, woman versus child to two human beings, and if there's a, if there are humans involved, we as a society have to protect. Both. And so, first, understanding that you can't neglect the child. Um, you have to understand part and parcel with this. Um, and then also understanding what I'm saying, which is there's a broader picture here for the woman. Um, and that is getting getting her help because 75% of women polled who are seeking an abortion in our, in our virtual clinic say, they say, if you could change these circumstances, they say, why first, why do you want an abortion? And then the second question follow-up is, if we could change that circumstance for you, would you choose to parent? And 75% say yes. Wow. And when, that is just a, such a powerful thing to understand is that women, if given choice, the real choice, mm-hmm. really the choice is over their circumstances, not a state of duress that they're in. Often they say 60% feel pressure from their partner, and that's why they have an abortion. Mm-hmm. It's pressure for their, from their partner. That's not a real choice for a woman. That's that's duress. And right. so, like, if you understand that real women are, have tangible needs that are not being met, and we work for that, that is pro woman. Mm-hmm. Um, that's empowering women to make to make the right choices, the choices they ultimately really want to make, which is to be a mother. Um, and so that's a long form answer to your question, but that's what I always say is, look, this is bigger than just about one individual or the other. There's two here we have to consider. Right, right. And you don't have to neglect one to serve the other. You can you can truly love them both. And I love how you said that, that there, there are real choices out there um, mm-hmm. where these women... I mean, there's so many who are willing to help change those circumstances so that that woman can have that child, that child can have an amazing life, and that woman can thrive because there are those who are willing to help. And Human Coalition is is clearly doing a great job of connecting those women with the right resources so that they can really have a choice of, of, what's, of, of what their life can look like, and it can be a beautiful, beautiful life. And one last question I did want to ask you, Chelsea, you talked about the importance of the church getting involved with this issue. Can you expand on that a little bit more? You know, if you could tell churchgoers, you know, what they can do to get involved and why it's so important that believers get involved in the pro-life issue, what what would you say to them? Oh, it is, it's just so important because we are losing half a million children a year. There are over, there are over 65 million people in our in our generation and community that should be here that aren't. And so understanding that these these preborn children are made in God's image, they're they're God's design and creation, and their lives matter and are important. I think that's just, you know, really basic fundamental principles for who we are as believers, is understanding we are made in God's image, and God has a will and a purpose for our lives. And so it's absolutely important that even though this is such a controversial issue, it's a hard issue, um, but that in our hearts we begin to understand there's there's no more vulnerable in our society that, that deserve pr- protection and dignity. Um, and starting with your heart on that and then beginning to engage in the community around you, um, encouraging your pastors to start. There are, there are abortion recovery ministries out there that they can develop at the church. And then, of course, I think just being community to these single women around us and to to women, they can volunteer at pregnancy resource centers. They can obviously donate to the initiative out there, um, but really saying, "Hey, I'll I'll come clean your house, or I'll come give you a mother's night out," or being community to moms around us who are making the choice to have children. Um, those are all ways to engage. But when it comes to actually engaging on the abortion issue, 
What we really need is is changing hearts and minds and a cultural shift. Politics and policy is going to be downwind of culture. And so yes. if we start to if we start to engage with advocacy and calling your members voting, voting for pro life in the primary and general election, this being your issue to vote on, those are the policymakers that are really going to make a difference at the end of the day on the policy side too. And so there's a number of ways from locally at your community, with your church, at the local clinics you're you're involved with, donating, but then lastly, truly delving into this issue on the political side. I know that if we as Christians are not leaning into politics, others are, right? right. The Planned Parenthood is a billion-dollar industry because they have all of the policy gurus in their back pocket. They've got government dollars. Um, and they are responsible for 35% of abortions in America because of it. And our goal is to put them out of business and to do it on an even playing field. And to do that, we need Christians to engage in this issue and, and really be willing to, to do the good work. Wow. That is amazing. That is amazing. Chelsea, thank you so much for coming on the show. I just so appreciate what you have shared. And, and if, folks want to learn more about Human Coalition and Human Coalition Action, where do they need to go online? Sure. Go to humancoalition.org, okay. humancoalition.org, um, and just go see what we're up to. Go see what the clinics are doing. We have um, updates, live updates on the babies being saved all the time across wow. the country. And then, of course, please just consider donating for this initiative. Um, we're really looking to have a holistic approach in the next Texas legislative cycle. And be very, very strategic in how we can really overcome this issue as a country. So very excited for the things to come and the work we're doing, and I hope that, that all of our listeners are too. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chelsea. And folks, if you want to hear more from Chelsea, you can come to the Policy Forum because she's going to be one of our speakers, and you can sign up for that at txvalues.org. Chelsea, thank you again so much for the time that you took to talk about the work that you're doing and really just to, to hear your heart on this issue. As we know, like you said, politics is downstream from culture, and the way we change cultures is through hearts and minds. And so I just so appreciate all that you're doing to, to have an impact on both. Well, thank you so much, Nicole, for having me. Um, it's just been great to be a part of what you guys are doing, too, and getting the message out there. So I really appreciate that your willingness to have me. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much again. And, and folks, like I said, if you want to hear Chelsea, you can go to txvalues.org and sign up for our policy forum September 6th through 7th. And look, I've had the privilege of working with Chelsea and she is doing amazing work at Human Coalition. And I loved what she shared really about the importance of changing hearts and minds and working at Texas Values, working in the public policy arena since 2012 and even a little before then. Sometimes it's easy to get so caught up in the fact that, that there's a lot going on, especially in the political arena. But we also have to make sure that we're changing hearts and minds. The way that policies get changed is when hearts and minds change. And I really feel like where we are in this moment in our state and in our nation is we now have a culture that this upcoming generation is the most pro-life generation since Roe v. Wade has, has been, um, has been the, the precedence in our nation. And so you have all these young people that want to see abortion overturned. They want it to be unthinkable. As a matter of fact, if you go to the National March for Life, uh, usually they hold them in January in Washington, D.C. I can definitely tell you, majority of, of those there are young people. They're amazing, and, and I love going to the March for Life because you see all these young people. They're so excited to be there. They are ready, they are championing the pro-life movement. And they march on the mall all the way to the United States Supreme Court. And I truly believe we will see Roe v. Wade overturned in my generation. Uh, but, but one thing that we have to do to make sure that things like that happen is, is we can't just think, let's overturn a Supreme Court case, which is so important. But we also have to make sure that the culture and our society is ready for that. And it's groups like Human Coalition that are making sure that when a woman is in a crisis pregnancy, she's going to have a place to go. She's going to have someone to talk to. She's going to get connected with the right medical care, with the social services, with the supplies, and everything else that she needs. 
And so I'm just so excited. Just, you know, sometimes we can look in the, at the political arena and the policy arena and get discouraged. But there are so many advancements that have been made, not just in the policy arena, but also in the cultural arena where we're seeing hearts and minds have been changed. And so I just encourage you, if you want to come to our policy forum, you're going to hear from folks like Chelsea Yeoman, from Eric Treen. We've got Congressman Chip Roy is going to be there. Uh, we've got representatives. We've got Supreme Court, Texas Supreme Court justices. Uh, we've got Matt Sharp from Alliance Defending Freedom. We've got Lori DeVillas, who works at Trotter House, which is an amazing pregnancy resource center and more. They work uh, by the UT campus, working to help young people and those who are in crisis pregnancies, those who have had an abortion and need help and need counseling after the fact. We've got so many amazing guests coming. We've got State Board of Education uh, member Barbara Cargill, who's going to be talking about an important issue specifically dealing with the health standards. So, you know, certainly we're working on policy and we're changing hearts and minds, but we've also got to think of this next generation coming up and what's going to be set as the standards for the health education standards in our state. That's coming up. And if you want to find out more of why that issue is so important, I encourage you go to our website, txvalues.org. And just as a heads up, we are a 501c3 organization, Texas Values, and the only way we can keep our lights on and be able to continue to do the work we do is through donations from people like you. And so I encourage you, if you'd like to donate, you can go to txvalues.org. We also have our action arm, as I talked about earlier, where we're able to talk about what's going on in the elections, with the primaries and the general elections. And you can go to txvaluesaction.org. If you want to find out more information, we'll also be releasing our scorecard soon so you can find out what happened during the Texas legislative session. So that's all I have time for today. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Texas Values Report, and we'll update you again soon.